Thank you, everyone, for your patience, and, and good Friday, and welcome to today's DM Connect webinar. Uh, this is the dog days of summer edition, or it could be the back to school edition. Either way, it's a very busy time for practices and families, so we greatly appreciate every one of you for taking the time to join us today. And this DM Connect series has become a global event thanks to all of you. And once again, we have doctors and team members representing practices from all over the world, uh, over 20 states in the US and international guests from 11 different countries. So uh, a great turnout. My name is Sean Pemberton. I'm professional education manager for Dental Monitoring North America and I'll be your moderator for today's session. And today we pay a virtual visit to the southwest corner of the great state of Missouri, home of the Missouri State University <laughs> Bears, Lambert's Cafe where rolls the size of softballs are thrown at you from across the restaurant. A truly amazing experience. World famous Highway 76 in Branson, Missouri, and of course, today's presenter, Dr. Frank Sharp. And today's presentation is titled Dental Monitoring from the Hands-On Dental or uh, Hands-On Doctor Perspective. Excuse me. But before I hand over the keys to today's presenter, please note that all participant lines have been muted. But if you have a question you would like to submit, please feel free at any time to enter your question in the chat provided, and we will address as many as uh, questions as time allows at the conclusion of the presentation. The session will be recorded in its entirety and an on-demand version will be available using the same link you've received following registration. Now our incredible team of training and integration specialists share proven best strategies to help you start and stay on a path to success. And while I promise you will hear this again in the next 45 minutes. Remember, there is no right and no wrong way to use dental monitoring. There is just your way. Many doctors find success in delegating ownership of dental monitoring management day-to-day -to, -day to designated team members and only involving themselves when a doctor's clinical judgment is needed. At the same time, there's many doctors who want or need to be more hands-on. They wanna look at scans, track treatment progress, and even engage in direct communication with patients. Yet they still enjoy the numerous benefits dental monitoring has to offer. Dr. Frank Sharp is one of those who is very much hands-on and he's here to share that experience with you today. So it's my pleasure to now turn the presentation over to Dr. Frank Sharp. Thank you so much, Sean. Uh, first like to say thank you for everyone that's in attendance today. Uh, you know, time is so valuable, and I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to learn more about dental monitoring and uh, listen to kind of my journey through it and how I got involved and uh, some of the ways that I use it from a hands-on perspective. So with that, let's get rolling. Uh, you know, I always kind of have this slide in some of my presentations that talks about, and you'll understand this as we go through there, that your family, your staff, your wallet, in particular, my back and my neck, uh, will all thank you for uh, jumping in the pool of dental monitoring and uh, seeing how valuable it is to your practice and how it can make you a better orthodontist and make you more aware of what's going on in both aligner and braces cases as we go through here. Full disclosure, I do get paid to speak for uh, dental monitoring. Uh, it is an honor. Um, I don't do this for a living. I'm just an orthodontist in Southwest Missouri, but this is the only thing that I really feel has changed the way that I practice and has made my life so much better uh, over the last five years that I've been involved. Full disclosure as well, that's my dog Chip. Every time I get up out of this chair at the uh, counter, he jumps up hoping that there's a plate of food so you can see the disappointment on his face that uh, unfortunately it was just a bunch of work that he did not finish as my second in command that I had to do. A little bit about me, uh, I have 
two children and a wife. I went to uh, school at Missouri State University, home of the Bears, like uh, Sean had mentioned. Uh, I went to dental school at University of Missouri, Kansas City, and I did my orthodontic residency at St. Louis University. Um, I like to brag I have one wife, which is a huge overhead reducer, but then we chose to have two kids, and that kind of negates the uh, above reduction, uh, but I love them to death, do anything for them. Uh, I enjoy time spending golf or spending time playing golf in Arizona. I always spend a lot of time out there, uh, hiking, being outdoors, traveling, fishing. And now, actually, I enjoy spending time at work for a change. About my practice, I've been in practice 28 years. Um, interestingly enough, I, I kind of do things in a different manner, it seems, than most people. Um, I had a deal worked out where I was going to be an associate buying into a practice that fell through about three weeks before graduation. Uh, and as a result, I had to make a decision. I either moved someplace else, wanted to be back in my hometown where my wife and I were from, uh, or I just start a practice from scratch. Um, I don't know if that was the smartest thing, but it turned out great for me. So hopefully that's still an option for a lot of people. Um, and I always joke that I kind of do things ass backwards. I actually got my satellite office open before my main office in Springfield. My satellite's in Branson, which is about 30 miles south. If you've ever had the pleasure of being in that area and enjoying the lake area in Branson, Missouri, uh, there's a group of oral surgeons that allowed me to basically go in and um, rent, a, rent a day a week is what I was doing at the time because they weren't they weren't in there every day. Uh, so as a result, I started my satellite office first because I had to do a full build out. I didn't know anything, the difference between conduit and carpeting at that point in time, but you learn really quick when uh, time is, is of the essence. So uh, we, we did that. We got our main office open. This is actually not my first office. I built this office in 2001, which we love, um, and that's where we're still operating out of today, and we still are in the same location in Branson as well. I like to joke that uh, outside of the office, I'm the king of turning dollars into dimes, which is great, not really, but in my practice, I'm very serious about keeping overhead costs in check and trying to make my practice run as efficiently as possible. You know, I went from zero patients when I first started to, uh, you know, around 720 patients starts a year. That's a lot. My back uh, over time started telling me to quit doing this, et cetera. I was seeing about 100 to 120 to 150 patients a day. Uh, and when you're young and, and healthy, you think, oh, this is great. This is, this is fantastic. But over the years, what you start noticing is um, your body isn't made to do that. So, and I did see virtually every single patient except uh, those needing impressions or separators in my office. The topics of discussion today, uh, kind of my decision on how I got involved with DM, how I found out about it, how I integrated it, uh, the actual DM launch that we did in 2019, and kind of how I see a hands-on engagement or perspective from a hands-on orthodontist, and then kind of where my practice is today as opposed to 2018, 2019, when I was really approaching the point of not wanting to practice orthodontics anymore. So this picture on the right, I love. This was actually Christmas day and I was cooking dinner for about 30 people in our family. Uh, that was one of the prime ribs that set ablaze that day. Um, so I thought, you know, this really kind of relates to what I was feeling from an orthodontic standpoint and a professional standpoint in 2016, 17, 18. Um, at that point in my practice, I was doing about 95% braces, about 5% aligners. Those numbers aren't 100% accurate, but they're pretty close. I didn't like aligners. I didn't know how they would fit. Uh, thus, I didn't like the idea of just kind of letting patients move along through treatment, me having no idea where they were gonna end up. I was working four days a week, really burned out, trying to figure out if I just wanted to quit. Do I sell the corporate? You know, 
what what was where was my lip my road leading me at that point in time so in 2018 the AO was in Washington DC uh decided you know I'm gonna go it's another reason for me to take off time and get away from my office I was pretty miserable uh being here because of the chaos and the number of people we're still seeing a day uh, so I go to my first meeting. It's a meeting about uh, pearls of finishing a perfect case. Um, after 10 minutes of being in there, listening to the pearl was you ban second molars for a better finish on your cases. Um, if I didn't ban second molars in my residency that I attended, I would have no longer been a resident. So I quickly got up, moved down the hall, realized the uh, you know, the, the convention area wasn't open yet. The exhibits weren't open yet. So I thought, thought I'd go to another meeting. As I'm walking down the hall, I see a sign that says remote monitoring of your patients. At that point in time, I wanted to be living in Arizona more than in Missouri. So I thought, well, maybe there's a way that this is something good that may help me. And at that particular meeting, a friend of mine, Dr. Terry Selke, was speaking and uh, got in there 10 minutes late. I left 40 minutes uh, later and, and my head was pretty much spinning. At that point, like I said, I kind of had mega burnout in 2018. It's taken off a week a month. Uh, I'd raised my fees pretty significantly in hopes that that would slow down my practice. Um, really didn't, so that was a backfire. I had zero marketing. I didn't have any SEO stuff. I didn't have any uh, social media stuff, no Google reviews, nothing of that nature. I was just kind of at the end of my career, I thought. Um, and of course, we all have those perfect patients that have exceptional hygiene, elastic wear. Um, they never do anything wrong. Somehow it's always our fault. Maybe that's just my office, but I think a lot of you can relate to that. And I was really ready to just sell or shut down the office. Um, you know, how many times you've made retainers for patients and they said, oh, these never really fit right from the beginning. And now his teeth have all moved. I think we've all been there. My why, why I got involved with DM, I had a compressed cervical disc between C4, C5, it's supposed to have surgery. Luckily enough, I compensated out for that. Um, you know, all those years of seeing many, many patients a day, um, you kind of have bad posture when you're young, but it doesn't bother you like it does when you're 55. Um, I wasn't using any loops. So for all of you younger orthodontists out there that may be listening, take advantage of those tools. It'll make your life better, position yourself better in front of the patient. And then a lot of mine, I kind of probably just chalk up to, to general stupidity, to be honest with you. Some of the problems that I wanted DM to solve for me is I wanted to spend more time with my family. My kids were getting older at that point. My daughter was a senior in high school and my son was a, a sophomore. I didn't want to miss any of the things they were doing. Um, I love being out in Arizona. I want to be more, I want to spend more time out there. And I really want to spend less time at work. I love my staff. I really love my patients, but it was just a grind. And so I was hoping this is this might be a solution to help me. Uh, get to a point where I feel better about showing up to work on Monday mornings instead of dreading it like I was at that point. And, you know, of course, you want to be a little greedy and say, hey, hopefully this will let me do all those things and help maintain my practice size, if not grow it and uh, keep my income at the same level. So December of 2018, actually September of 2018, um, I, I made the decision to go all in on DM. Um, you know, I think that's important when you research it and you talk to, to doctors like myself, which I'm always happy to talk to people if you have any hesitation about DM, uh, as are all the other KOLs and people working with dental monitoring. They're a great group of people. Um, but, you know, DM just trying to dabble with it or kind of only use it on certain patients or a small percentage of your patients to see how it goes. You're never going to get the full effect. You're not going to realize what a difference it can make in your practice and how well um, you can follow cases week to week, be it fixed appliance cases or aligner therapy cases. Um, so, you know, I said, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to go all in. At that point, 
I was burned out and I wanted to get out. So I didn't really have much to lose. And all the research I'd done and talking with Terry and some other people at DM, um, you know, was just hoping that everything that I had kind of set up in my mind to make my practice better and make me start enjoying orthodontics more uh, was going to hold true in, in years to come. So in 2018, uh, December 2018, um, I'm, I'm the king of begging for forgiveness instead of asking for permission. So at our Christmas party, I got up the nerve to tell my staff, oh, by the way, we're going to have a major change in our office starting next month in January. Um, and it gives them a little less time to panic, try to talk me out of things. We've all been to the AOs and tried to start new procedures or different ways of doing things. Staff doesn't like that. They like routine where they know what their jobs are. They feel comfortable. They feel valued. And, you know, they don't like a lot of new stuff that they have to learn. To this day, I use this phrase all the time, uh, and I'll use it a million more. Hands down, this is the that was the best decision I ever made to go all in on DM. So DM launch, that was my staff, part of my staff right there. Celebrate different things throughout the year and different t-shirts. But uh, we went live in January of, tw of 2019. Um, you know, the stuff's about ready to hit the fan because we all know that once they settle down after a week or so, I didn't have like uh, a, a big mass exodus of my staff or anything because I kind of gave them the ultimatum. Hey, you're either going to get on the DM ship and sail with me or you're going to be left at the dock. I, I didn't really give them a, a choice, which was kind of a roll of the dice. But luckily enough, everybody got on. And we've been sailing on that boat ever since and been super happy about it. Um, not so much December or January of 19, but, um, you know, they were there, they showed up, our training, our integration went really smooth. DM has a great way of making this happen, uh, to where it's just not chaotic. Um, I chose to pick a date and move forward with all those patients starting on DM. Uh, I know Dr. Selke and others have gone in and done retroactive, um, where all their patients Currently, they went back and got them scan boxes, et cetera, et cetera. To me, I felt like my staff would, uh, and myself actually, would do better uh, going in and starting just at a, at a drop dead date and moving forward with everyone being on DM at that point. Um, you know, same time, I figure my staff's already not too happy with me. Let's go ahead and throw in a uh, full-on assault of um, Invisalign or aligner therapy because we haven't done much of that. And that was really what the market was kind of demanding in our area at the time. Kind of foresaw that coming to our area. And, um, you know, the other thing is no one else in my area was using dental monitoring. So I figured it was a way to differentiate myself from all the other orthodontists. In April of 2019, three months later, um, you know, the fans cleaned up. Um, staff's pretty much fully on board. Um, thinking about buying an iTero scanner, you know, look at me go. Uh, but the great thing about it was it was about a three-month transition. Um, I chose to do it in a way, and look, like I said, there's no right or wrong way to do this. And that's what I want to make clear throughout this presentation. You don't have to follow a cookbook on the way Terry Selke did it or the way Tara Gostovich did it or the way Barry Benton did it or Frank Sharp. Um, you have to navigate those waters between you and your staff. And so for me to keep them interested and, and keep them on board that, hey, this wasn't anything that, that's going away anytime soon. We're going to go ahead and keep pressing forward. And this is going to be really what Sharp Orthodontics is about, is we're, we're integrating this tool into our office and we don't get to slowly just forget about it and let it die in, in the basement, among other things that we've tried in the past and never continued with. So uh, we would get together and first thing in the morning for about 10 minutes, of course, we didn't have very many people on dental monitoring at that point, which was great because we could go over the slides and or the scans, excuse me, and everyone could comment if someone didn't understand what something meant. We kind of went through it. So it's like as I was learning, they were learning and it just made us a better team throughout the years because 
the only people that had to kind of catch up were the people that started later in our office. So with aligners and DM back in 2019, when I joined with dental monitoring, um, you know, I started my first aligner case September. Um, I'd use some other products or other aligner companies, basically just to uh, do minor things if we had any relapse from not wearing retainers, et cetera. But I really wanted to transition over because I saw the benefit of how dental monitoring works so well with aligner therapy. Um, you know, what could go wrong? I don't know, a million things. Luckily enough, it didn't, except the fact that, you know, your overhead is going to go up with more of an aligner-driven practice. But once again, that's where DN comes in to help us kind of negate those overhead increases, uh, as we'll talk about later on in the presentation. So for clear aligners at that point in time, I really didn't know what to expect because I was doing 5% or less, uh, but I didn't realize there was a higher market demand in our area for aligners at that point. And it's pretty obvious to anyone that has done a little bit of research on the internet that it's a really nice marriage between DM and clear aligners uh, from the standpoint that I never wanted to do it because I never felt like I was in control of the cases before. Uh, I don't know if people are wearing them. I don't know if they're having trouble with them. I don't know if the product's actually moving the teeth or if they're just laying on the nightstand somewhere. And then when they come in, nothing fits and we just keep moving and, and starting again. And I was really hoping to try to start decreasing the number of patients per day that we were seeing in our office. That was my hope at the time. Um, and I was also wanting, you know, with that, with the decrease in number of patients, comes a decrease in staff uh, stress, the doctor stress, and it just makes the atmosphere of the practice so much more happy, so much more inviting, and kind of almost creates a boutique type of experience rather than a cattle call experience like I had done for the previous 20 plus years. Also wanted uh, no more unscheduled appointments. I hated emergency appointments. Uh, we had an entire chair dedicated for emergency appointments and had an assistant hired just to do those in case somebody called because we wanted to be able to get them in the same day for customer, uh, good customer care and support. Um, but that was just one extra thing we had to deal with that uh, we didn't know what that part of our schedule held from day to day. DM and braces at that point in time in 2019. You know, some of the goals I was hoping for is I was hoping to shorten the time. Um, you know, I was hoping four to six months, even two months. If you know what your overhead runs every time you turn on the lights every day, what your overhead costs are for staff salaries, uh, et cetera. Um, you can cut the, that, that overhead down by shortening treatment times and not taking quite as long to finish cases. Um, I was kind of wanting to settle or set and watch goals as we went through on uh, the braces cases, because that was the majority of our patients at the time. Um, and I want to get to a point where we're doing on-demand appointments, which we'll talk about a little bit later, um, so that we're not coming in and doing unnecessary checks on, on patients as, as they're progressing through treatment, be it Invisalign, Spark, or uh, fixed appliance cases. Uh, I was hoping that you know, communication when you're seeing 120 to 150 people a day is tough. Uh, you can't see and talk to all of those people and all the parents unless they're back in our clinic, which we do allow. And a lot of people come back there, but um, it's just hard to, to make those rounds and do good quality care. Uh, I want to get rid of emergency visits as much as possible. And uh, as we get closer to finishing patients with braces, I wanted to be able to kind of get rid of some unnecessary checks. We were always checking people first one, two, three weeks before they came in to get their braces off for fear that they're going to break a bracket off, have a tooth move, and then we wouldn't be able to deband them and make the patient unhappy on the day they're supposed to be happy. So braces in my office, I want to be uh, aware, I was hoping dental monitoring would alert me when things failed, when things came off, brackets and bands, arch wire, power chains, 
anything like that. It's amazing what it actually monitors. I think it's well over a hundred things that it monitors. I couldn't look at that if I sat there for two hours on each patient. Um, it's just advantage of taking taking advantage of AI in today's world makes a difference between uh, the way you practice now and the way you used to practice. As far as marketing with DM, like I said earlier, I felt like this would kind of differentiate me because we're always trying to look for ways to uh, kind of make ourselves shine and, and maybe be the, do that one thing that makes people pick us over or the person down the street. Um, you know, I like the idea. I'm kind of a control freak of being able to see what happens every single week in, in patients' mouths and really what an 014 arch wire does, really how well they're wearing their aligners, et cetera, et cetera. And the great thing is it gave us fantastic photo documentation. It also talks and sends out messages to all the patients and the parents both uh, about how they're doing with hygiene, how their treatment's rolling along, et cetera, et cetera. And then we are allowed to send out any message that we want to the patient as well, as far as encouragement. Hey, you need to brush better here, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, every one of these topics I'm talking about on these slides, I could probably talk for two hours if you, if you were bored enough to sit around and listen to me. Uh, pontificate about these, but that's really the magnitude of DM. Um, it just goes on and on, and it, it never stops. They're never satisfied, as you'll learn when you get involved. The owner, Philippe Salat from France, fantastic guy, brilliant mind, uh, and he's never satisfied, which is the kind of person you want running the ship. There's always better ways to improve things. There's always better things uh, coming down the road to make our life easier and make the patient's lives, you know, from an orthodontic standpoint, a little bit more enjoyable. Um, and, you know, I was hoping, hey, five to six, seven years, this is kind of going to be the standard of care is what I was hoping for. And, you know, I really believe that to be the case in my opinion today. This was at our annual users meeting. Um, Josh Adcox was asking me a question. I probably talked way too long on whatever he asked me. Uh, and Dr. Tara Gostovich was probably like, please quit talking so that I can answer a question. Uh, but, but I do like that picture and they're, they're great people. One of the things I constantly talk to people about is there's no right or wrong way to utilize DM. Um, you know, one of the things that we look at is, you know, I was only interested in being able to decrease the number of people that come into my office every day. And I wanted to see what happened every week in treatment. And I wanted to see uh, how aligner treatment actually was working and if, if it was working and how much they were wearing it based on how the aligners fit, et cetera. So, you know, there's many different ways to go about this. No matter which way you do it, it's kind of like practicing orthodontics. Um, the way that I do it, as opposed to the way you do it and everybody else, um, there's a thousand different ways to get to Rome. Um, as long as you get there and you have a good result, you're, set, you're happy, the staff's happy, the patient and parent are happy, fantastic. Keep going down that road. I'm more a, a hands-on person. I do all my own ordering for overhead. Uh, I like to look at all the scans that we do in the office every day or that we get sent to the office. We do that, uh, Dr. Moore and I look at those every day together. Um, but I have friends that get fantastic results and patients are happy, all the things I just spoke about, but they tend to delegate more. They tend to um, you know, have a relationship with the staff where everyone knows what they're supposed to do. I kind of like being the captain of the ship and having all the other people help me get to, uh, to the end of the road there, to the end of the water. Um, and, you know, I think everybody in today's world needs to be thinking about having more of an AI driven practice uh, to, to keep moving on uh, as an orthodontist. So as a hands on doctor, um, you know, the value that I saw and that I see is just the control aspect. I like to uh, have that control uh, over whether I'm using aligner therapy or whether I'm using fixed appliances, I want to know when something breaks. I want to get that patient in. Uh, I want to fix that so that we don't go backwards in uh, in time of treatment. 
Um, you know, if you fix something within seven days after it fails on a fixed appliance or a braces case, um, we're not adding treatment time. And the patients realize this and the parents realize this and they see that as a true bonus of coming to our office. Um, you know, we can get them in. We have more time in our schedule as we'll get to in just a few minutes. Um, and it almost feels like a smaller practice, even though we're actually a larger practice than we've ever been. Um, it gives them the ability to communicate with us, which we'll talk about shortly. Um, and I, I love that. I want to be in touch with my patients. I want my patients to feel like I'm not off limits after five o'clock on a Thursday. Um, and I like being able to see kind of, like I said, who else, how else are you going to be able to see weekly um, how your treatment's going, how things are working, how patients' hygiene is going, uh, making sure there's no failures in any of the systems, et cetera. You know, our workflow here in the mornings, basically we, Dr. Moore and I get here, we review all the scans, you know, people that think, well, where are you going to, I'm just going to have to spend extra time before I have to work to do this, to implement this in my practice. Um, what I'll tell you is DM doesn't change your practice overnight. DM is a all in, 100% dive into the water. It's nice. Um, figure out how to swim and then, then become an Olympian at that, at that point. Um, because where I am spending time reviewing scans, checking uh, clean checks or whatever you want to call them uh, to keep the aligner cases uh, progressing in a, in a positive manner, um, I have so much more time in my schedule because of the on-demand scheduling. What I mean by that, with Invisalign, we give them all their trays, and if they have 35 sets of aligners to go through on this first set, um, they do a great job. They do their scans like they're supposed to, and they get uh, permission to go to the next aligner. Once Dr. Moore and I give them that permission, um, we're not seeing those patients for 35 weeks. Uh, that's a huge opener in your schedule. Um, you know, when I was predominantly braces, heavy on the braces side of uh, patients, you have to see those patients. You have to change the ties. You have to change the wires. You have to make sure that nothing's failing in the system, et cetera. But for braces, same thing. It's every bit as valuable. DM is every bit as valuable uh, for braces as it is for aligners. I think a lot of people jump to that conclusion. It's easy to see how, how easy it would fit into aligner therapy, uh, but it's amazing how it helps you finish cases better in a more timely manner and with less uh, hygiene problems, decalcification, et cetera. You're always going to have those people that don't cooperate. I get that. Um, DM is not the, the savior for that. That's just a personal thing with patients. You're either going to be a good cooperator, you want a good result, or you're not. But for those people that don't cooperate, that choose not to get the most out of the orthodontic therapy that we're delivering, um, it's a great way because it documents poor oral hygiene, how many things they have broken, how many times they haven't shown up, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And your question may be, well, what if they don't scan? Yeah, we've got people that don't scan. Guess what? Those people get a phone call. They have to come in every three weeks to our office. We have time to see those people every three weeks because we've opened up holes in our schedule. Um, problem that you get into there is parents don't want to come in every three weeks. So that kind of puts the burden back on the, on the patient, whether it be an adult or, a, or, or an adolescent or a teenager, that the parents say, hey, do your scans. It's, it's, uh, there's a lot of good value to this. And so that's what we try to promote during our new patient consultations as well. DM is constantly coming up with new things. Um, I haven't seen an improvement or a change yet that hasn't been an improvement. Uh, it's phenomenal. Um, Scan Assist is just one of those things. It was launched in 2023 at the AAO meeting. Um, and basically what this does, the issue that we were having before is sometimes the scans, they wouldn't get quite enough, far enough back on the sides. Uh, and so you didn't get a good representation of the, of the way the bite was fitting because you can set goals now with um, the DM goals section of the, of the patient uh, screen. and 
decide if you want to, you know, set a goal. So as soon as they hit a class one, uh, it'll alert you and let you know as soon as they have ideal over jet and overbite. So the scan assist has really come in helpful or has come in and, and been a great improvement because they basically set it up like a, a video game for these kids uh, so that you can't really mess it up. Our scans are far more consistent and uh, the documentation is, is fantastic. And so that allows the goal section on our uh, dashboard for each patient, uh, it makes it much more consistent because before if they didn't get the scan turned all the way to the side, you maybe thought it was a, a class one correction, but it's still maybe a quarter step off. So this, this takes care of that problem for us. You know, some of the problems, you can't trust your data, just all those things I just kind of went over if you want to read that on the left. I'm going to play a little video here that just kind of shows you what the scan assist does. So as you can see, what scan, scan assist uh, accomplishes is more of a consistent uh, scan. That is what shows up on the patient screen that they're watching. So it won't, those buttons won't ding or they won't collect those little metals uh, or coins until they get the perfect shot. DM Insights, those were launched in 2022. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm not a big guy about running reports, looking at things, uh, starting out by myself. I knew if I was making money or if I wasn't making money, if I was increasing patients every year, if I wasn't increasing patients, there are very few things that I was looking at just from a business standpoint to build my business. Um, I'm getting way more in tune with DM Insights. It's a wonderful thing. It's a fully automated uh, data collection. Uh, there's no manual input from your staff. Uh, which they love, uh, and it really gives us facts rather than an opinion. And my friend Bill Lehman down in Tampa, Florida, does some great, uh, great uh, lectures on this, as well as Barry Benton. I think he sends several of those, and Tara Gostovich as well. And what it does, you can compare about anything in your practice, be it aligner patients to braces patients. If you're using one aligner company and you're using a second aligner company, you can kind of compare and contrast how patients do with those. Um, we actually, I'm going to forward through here, this kind of talks about things that it, uh, that it tracked, uh, individual notifications, uh, history of events, and photo documentation. This was prior to Insights. You know, after Insights, uh, we get all those things plus a whole plethora of other things. And I mean, like I said, it's just kind of endless. Uh, Bill Lehman really, really does a great job with this. I'm now starting to get into that. I'm not the person you want to hear talk about that quite yet, but give me a little time. I'm going to get there. Um, you know, in our particular practice, how it came to be effective for us, we were tracking uh, when brackets were coming off, what week brackets were uh, uh debonding de at that time uh, when we were losing attachments on aligners. And we can track that from chair to chair. And what we realized is we had a uh, button that was just barely leaking water, even though you really couldn't see it when you sprayed it. Uh, and so that particular assistant had a bunch of extra brackets that weren't sticking. And so rather than us putting the blame on her, like we might have done before DM, we were able to realize that she hadn't changed. Or she was she was doing the bonding procedure correctly, be it attachments or brackets. The problem was uh, with the mechanical. It was a mechanical error. So we replaced the air water syringe and all of a sudden those got better. Um, you know, it looks at practice data. It looks at performance management data. 
Um, you know, you can just compare and contrast. And it's it's amazing. That's a whole nother two or three hour lecture on that. Uh, but just to show you, they're never they're never happy with where they are with the end. They're always making improvements and they listen to their users and they try to make changes uh, that benefit everybody. Uh, the DM adaptive scan frequency, I love this. Uh, we've been using this for a while now. Uh, I think pretty much out to everybody by the middle of July of this year. Um, and what we realize is some patients need to switch their trays before seven days like the aligner companies suggest. Uh, and so for us, we have it set up to where they'll start out with seven day intervals. If they get three goes, meaning that they're wearing them well, they're fitting well, then we'll drop them to six day intervals. And then they do that again, we go to five days, then we go to four days. Um, there's all different ways you can set it up. Like I said, there's no right or wrong way to use this or anything in DM. Uh, but we have many patients that are cruising through treatment. They're getting done faster because we're changing their aligners every four days. The beauty is you don't have to do this manually anymore. DM does it for you. So if we're on four days and we've been doing that for five weeks, every four days we're changing, um, they accidentally have a no-go or the tray isn't fitting correctly to the tooth. Um, it'll automatically push them back and we'll start at the seven-day interval again. And it gives us time to look at that and see how things are really tracking and moving along. This is just a slide that shows on the patient dashboard, that red box, you can turn it on and off. And usually you know, within the first month, we kind of monitor patients and see how they're scanning. We don't turn it on on everybody because uh, you can, like I said, you always kind of have an idea of who's going to be a good cooperator and who's not. And so far, our DM coordinator has a good vibe for that based on how they do their scans at the first visit, et cetera, and then how they do their first four scans. And then we'll use that, uh, use that tool as needed. Dashboard labels, love it. One of my favorite things, um, we use these all the time. They came out with these. Um, I don't have to toggle back and forth between my practice management software. And you can make these on your own. It lets us know just by going through our DM um, dashboard page on every patient. Uh, we don't have to go back and look at notes now. All the things that are important for us to be watching on that case, we can put in the bubbles and we can keep, uh, keep moving right along through treatment. And it allows us to communicate and our DM coordinators know, um, hey, we need to get this person in for a D-band. We need to get this person in for a revision, et cetera. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful addition. I think it's been very popular. This is just a patient example. Uh, you know, she's not wearing any elastics. Uh, we have her scheduled for removal, yet we have her scheduled for revision. In our office, we always look at them in person, and if they're ready to get them off that day and get the attachments off and go to uh, retainers, we got time in our schedule and we do it that day for them. How DM makes your staff better? So many ways. We use it for constructive feedback. Uh, we use it basically, it's great photo documentation. If, if somebody's not clipping wires, somebody's not uh, you know, putting power chains on correctly. It's just a great way to get your staff trained consistently to do them, to get them to do things the way that you want them to do it. And the more consistent your uh, assistants become, the more trust the parents have and the more confidence they have in all the assistants working on their children, not just, hey, I want to pick Lori or I want to pick me or I want to pick Tracy. Um, that's kind of gotten, that. That's we don't have that that problem anymore in our practice. Uh, they're happy just to come down and sit down and let all of our assistants work on them because they're very well trained. They even kind of set goals among themselves uh, to kind of see who has the least amount of things that we talk about. We don't have big meetings about this. If we see somebody forgot to clip a wire at the at the initial placement of brackets, um, then we go in and just have them come in the office and say, hey, you forgot to clip this, you know, go through the, the schedule of things that we do uh, before we let the patients go. Uh, and the staff has been very, very receptive to this. 
in 2020, uh, Dr. Moore joined my practice. Once again, I told my staff about this about a month in advance. Um, DM was up and doing great at that point, very much a part of our everyday world. Um, couldn't imagine practicing without it. Staff's happy. I'm happy. The world is, is my oyster, so to speak. Um, when Dr. Moore started, I never really wanted an associate or partner because I was worried they'd never do things the way that I do things. Um, you know, it's hard to make two minds think alike. DM really bridges that gap for me or bridged it for me and hopefully most other uh, multi-doctor offices. Um, because during the pandemic, Dr. Moore, we'd come in every day if we had 120 people scheduled. I'd take 60, she'd take 60. Uh, we'd call those patients and parents individually, uh, tell them everything is okay since the world we thought was coming to an end at that point. Um, DM was a lifesaver. I joke with Philippe every time I see him. I said, you never told me that was going to be a huge benefit for me. Um, he said, I never knew it would be. Hopefully it'll never be again. Uh, but it was a way for her. She would stay after we would leave two or three hours and she would go back and she'd look at all of our patients and she would see the kind of wires that we use, see the kind of space closure that we did, see how we bonded things, how I moved my attachments, uh, what kind of attachments I used, et cetera. Uh, and by the time we came back after five and a half weeks, um, she knew a lot of our patients' names at that point. She's a brilliant doctor, super smart. Uh, I'm glad to have her so that she can do all the, the hard stuff and I get to do more of the fun stuff, um, flit around and talk with patients and parents and wear my goofy wine shirts and try to be more of an entertainer and let her do uh, all the all the day to day stuff. And uh, she she's done fantastic with it. So my practice today in a nutshell, um, like I said, I'm an overhead freak. Um, I have few to little emergencies in our in our office now. You know, we do both aligner and braces patients. I'm not 100% aligner, just don't ever want to be. I think you got to offer a, a variety of different treatment options for your patients to be comfortable. Um, you know, it's easy to increase the number of aligner cases in your practice because you're not having to see them. And obviously, you can see the benefit of how DM works seamlessly with that. Uh, and really, the difference between gold and platinum, one point in time, I figured out, basically pays for the cost of DM if you don't want to charge a technology fee. A lot of people do that. Um, there's many different ways to offset that and make that better. And like I said, it's a great way to train new assistants. Uh, overhead and staff, you know, yeah, you can operate with less staff. I really want to point something out. It's not a way to reduce your staff by saying, hey, sorry, Jody, but we've got DM and we get to cut three assistants out of the loop now. Um, during COVID, we all realized that it was getting harder and harder to find employees. And when someone left, it really made an impact on your practice. Um, DM allows you to continue to manage and, and navigate those, those waters without it just being a huge, uh, a huge time crunch and making everyone stressed out. Um, you know, you can operate if someone's out for the day or if someone's sick, uh, if someone's on maternity leave, things like that. And it doesn't really affect our day to day because we decrease the number of people that we see. Um, you know, in our case, we actually ended up having a couple people that quit. Um, we were able because of the way we run our practice now, we didn't necessarily have to replace those. Um, so from that standpoint, you can look at it. Yeah. If you can get by and not have to do that, um, then it does save you some things. You know, DM does work 24-7 and is never sick, et cetera, uh, but it's not a human being. And um, I just want to make sure that no one thinks just because you're using DM, uh, that actually replaces your staff members. Um, stress. Decrease in stress. You know, if employees out, it doesn't affect us. We see many fewer patients uh, than we used to. Uh, fewer patients in the office, less demand on your time. Uh, the happier front desk is going to be because they're not having to deal with fires like they used to. Uh, the communication's great. Patient parents can text me anytime, seven days a week, and I'll respond to them. Believe it or not, they respect that. They don't take advantage of that. And uh, I just get only 
positive feedback from, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's Sunday at uh, one o'clock in the afternoon. You actually sent me a note back. Uh, it's a great way to practice market. It gives us more time to work on people that are in the office more, the fixed appliance cases. And now we don't have any problems with after school appointments. It's fantastic. Like I said, uh, stress, you can have longer lunches, spend your time how you want. Time is the only thing we can't get back. DM actually helps us give our patients, our parents, our staff, and the doctors time back, which is a pretty powerful point if you stop and think about it. Uh, we don't have to have as many staff meetings because we're kind of all on the same page all the time. Um, and we all want more days off. I, I certainly did at that point. My, Hi, my name is Mia, and I'm an assistant here at Sharp Orthodox. I'll pass that. That's just somebody doing some YouTube videos. She's a great patient, uh, but it's a great way to, to market your practice as well. As far as ROI stuff, DM, once you use it for a while, like I said, it's not an overnight thing. It took us probably 12 to 18 months before we really started noticing big holes in our schedule, decrease in the number of patients coming in, et cetera. Um, we can work if somebody's out sick for the day or has a, as a, their chill, child's out sick. Um, and just makes our practice run way more efficient. And if someone's not in the chair, it allows me to put a new patient in that chair, uh, et cetera. So what our old emergency chair used to be is an overflow of records patient. It's where the records, overflow of records go and also new patients. So it's a great, uh, great, great asset. And it kind of puts the doctors and the patients and the parents all on the same page. And they're very happy with the communication they have from our office now. Uh, they're more involved in treatment than ever before. Like I said, we give the gift of time back to patients and parents. Um, my health has definitely improved. I'm in a happier mood. My staff's happier all the time. We don't have that stress. I mean, we we see like this next slide coming up. Um, you know, yeah, our practice has gotten bigger since DM over the over the years, where we used to see 120 to 150. We're seeing on average 45 to 55. Sometimes it's less than that. Um, we have seen braces uh, cases come down in treatment time. Not all of them. Don't fool yourself. You're still going to have the bad cooperators, you're going to have the really hard cases, but it allows you to have more time to, to work with those patients. Um, we average around two revisions per case. We see a lot of Invisalign cases three to five times. Uh, so we're about 85% Invisalign, 15% braces patients right now since 2019. Um, being at that level, there's your discount, which is what I was looking for back in 2019, but didn't get for a while. Um, and it's just nice to know when there's a problem. We don't have any surprises on our schedule anymore. Everything is a scheduled appointment. There's, there's nothing that's unscheduled as far as revision scans, uh, et cetera, emergencies, very few of those. Um, kind of just a recap of, of what we've been talking about. I feel like we have better outcomes. Don't have to worry about people swallowing things, et cetera. Uh, patients, and the patients and parents basically market uh, our practice for us because they love DM. They love being able to watch the movie of before and after and, and their progress during treatment. So I'm going to go through a couple slides pretty quick here because we're running short on time. Um, up front, these cases aren't hard. They're pretty easy cases. Uh, but what I want you to realize is we did these treatments in a short amount of time with anywhere from three to five visits. Those are cases you can put on the back burner. You watch them every week. You have good control over the cases, uh, but they're just great money makers for you. It helps offset the cost of some of the other cases that take longer and you get to spend more time with those. So like I said, as you look at this, don't go, oh, he's only showing easy cases. You know, that's a half step class too. But they did a great job. We saw them three times from the time we met them until the time we got finished. The upper lateral case, making the space. These people love it because they don't have to come in uh, very often. And uh, if they have a question, they get on the uh, app and they ask us about it. Open bike cases, three visits from basically a one year time period. We did one revision on them. It's a great case. She was a great patient. She did everything she's supposed to do. Deep bite, 
little class two, not much, but mostly that uh, lower left canine was out of position. Right here, phase two cases are a breeze. Very few visits. Um, this is one, like I said, nothing particularly hard, but you can focus your time and attention. You can do these all day long um, and get a great result. Some of these, yeah, like this one in particular, left cat, left lateral. I didn't like that. I wanted to do a revision. They were happy after one set. They were done. They leave a happy patient. They're pretty well lined up. Yeah, I'd like to change that, but they were happy. Uh, this case, I do a lot of crazy extraction patterns. This, this particular lady needed surgery. I took out two upper buys and a lower incisor because she refused, refused to do surgery. She had some perio issues. Uh, I think we've seen her four times, probably five times up to this point because this was last uh, taken in, in um, April. Uh, but she's happy. Her teeth look great. She's happy as a clam. Treatment's going well. And she hadn't had to come in very often because she lives about 45 minutes away. I'm going to go through these real quick. Just some of the things you'll see that's a noticeable unseat that it'll point out every time it's more than uh, uh, the, the amount that you designate what you want your unseats to be. Uh, so the braces in my office, better hygiene, more after school appointments. We're doing more on demand scheduling, meaning we're only seeing patients as we need to. All of our uh, Invisalign patients or Spark cases we give the all their trays up front and um, so we don't have to store any of that and then when it's time for them to come in or do a revision or something's not tracking that's when they come in for our braces cases just a quick thing to kind of point out I'm a big hands-on guy like I said and I want people to understand um, you know it's about what works in the clinic for me I, I don't care so much about statistics and all that good stuff and looking at how things are evaluated. I want to know what works for me in the clinic. And so that shows you one week, following week, the wire is out of the lower left seven. We call, we had them come in, we fix it that day and we keep on moving. Uh, that just shows bracket came off. I have no idea where it went. They didn't either, but we got it on within a week of it coming off and we just kept on cooking through treatment. This is a great thing. There's a self-ligation door that's open. There's one that's open. Dr. Mord sent a message showing them how to push up on the door and close it. These people drive from about 25 minutes away. In our Branson office saved them a trip coming up to have us do have us do that. And that was them after they got it shut. Once again, bracket comes loose. It shows you all these things and so much more. Power chains, O ties. It's an O tie that's off on the week before on the left. It's off a week later on the right. These are great things to have your staff do when you're out of the office. They come in and change all the braces patients we're not doing wire changes on. They can come in anytime on certain days and have, uh, have all those colors changed out. Keeps them happy. This, yeah, that patient should have had braces on from day one. Somehow or another, the assistant at the time was new, didn't realize what our codes were, and uh, she thought it was an upper, upper start only. So that's a great learning tool for the staff to show them, hey, this is what we want when we see that much of, an, of the bottom teeth showing, et cetera. Uh, winding up here, this is a patient, uh, a friend of ours, it's a patient, their daughter. And in a period of about six weeks, all of a sudden we weren't doing anything, weren't wearing rubber bands, we're waiting for upper left three to come in on her. All of a sudden she started getting gingival recession. We haven't changed her wire or done anything different in like three months. And every week that tissue goes down and down and down. I have dashboards set up with my periodontist in town uh, so I can send patients to them. They can look at that the same time I do. Uh, the periodontist said I need to get her in. He saw her on a uh, Thursday, did surgery on her the following Monday. And even over the weekend, it had gone down some more. She ended up having a lot of little extra freedoms that you couldn't really see until you really pulled extremely hard down on her lip that they're moving it in a lateral position and the tissue just started giving way. That time she wasn't scheduled when we first saw her come in for another 10 weeks. We got her uh, graft done and that's where it was right before we did the graft. And that's where it is afterwards. All that's documented. Unbelievable record keeping, documentation, 
uh, it follows all those things for you. It just takes a lot of stress off your uh, off your life and things off your plate. You can run smoothly if you're down a staff member. It's a great way to train staff, point out things that they may be doing that uh, you don't want them doing. Uh, and we're no longer triage doctors. That's that's you know I kind of realized that's all I really was is I, I didn't know who was coming into my office. I didn't know what we we're going to be doing next until they come in and they sit down. They could have 10 broken brackets, zero broken brackets, horrible oral hygiene, great oral hygiene. Now I get to see uh, how everything progresses week to week in a very uh, manageable way to do that. And it doesn't demand a lot of my time. It's amazing what I've learned about orthodontics in the last five years from DM. So I get a kick out of this. They suggest these uh, emojis when you put stuff in on these PowerPoints. I have no idea why I ever quit practicing because with DM you don't have to, but for some reason, I guess you're going to sleep more if you do. Um, and I said, it opened up a new chapter in my, in my orthodontic life. Um, I'm happy. I'm practicing. I don't have any plans of stopping completely in any time soon. Uh, and in my, in my opinion, I think it's the new standard of care in ortho. So once again, Time is the big thing. I can't tell you how much I appreciate your time today. You guys giving us that gift of time. You guys hanging in there with me with this hillbilly accent that I have. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, your staff's going to have more time. You're going to have more time, a lot less chaos in the office, and uh, no more, you know, treating patients proactively um, or reactively. You're going to be treating them proactively because you know what's coming in from week to week. Time's money, like they say. Uh, I love spending time with my kids. This is in the dead of winter. It's a great time to fish on the lake that's by our house. Um, so have, have fun. Adopt DM. Work less. Have less stress in your life. Have a happier staff and more time to do exactly what you want to do. Love this quote. You can't, uh, you can't mess around or you're going to miss a lot in life. Uh, so take the time, let DM give you some time back and uh, take a look around. Don't miss anything. That's my personal information. I appreciate uh, you guys listening again. DM appreciate you uh, listening to this, uh, this lecture. Take those numbers, call me. I will talk to anybody anytime. Uh, I love talking about DM. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Sharp. Uh, I, I actually love your presentation style because, you know, I can just tell listening to you and I've, and of course, I've listened to you a lot of times in various forms, but like you're, you're just speaking from the heart, like you're just speaking from your experience. It's not like, hey, I, I do this professionally. I uh, have an entire script made up. It's like, I just want to share my experience and, and I appreciate that about you. Yeah. The slides um, just get in my way. I could just sit and talk <laughs> off the cuff for hours and hours and hours. But like I said, uh, I think only one hour at a time because I don't want any uh, anyone bleeding from their ears from my accent. <laughs> well, we did have a few questions that, that came in and I'll and I'll kind of go through them. I'll make one of them is more of a two part question. So I'll combine them, but I'll, I'll separate them for you. Uh, but, but the first one is just about your scheduling intervals, uh, particularly with your braces patients. Are those, uh, how, is that, how has that changed? And are you going longer than the, the typical four to six weeks? And that was a question from Patrick. Yeah, you know, I used to, I used to see people just because I didn't have time in my schedule uh, back in 20, basically from 2006 until I adopted DM and, and got into it for a couple of years. Um, I didn't have any time to put anybody. So we were going out 10 to 12 weeks between visits. Um, now with DM, the way that I use it, which once again, there's no wrong way to use this. Um, but the way I feel most comfortable now, and as I use DM more and more and more, um, I just trust the process. And so for us, we're going about six to 10 week intervals still. Uh, like I said, we, if they need to have wires or, uh, uh, power chains, O ties changed, et cetera, 
they come in when we're, the doctors are out of the office and the staff can do that uh, in the state of Missouri legally and, and not have any issues with that as long as we document what we wanted to do. Um, you know, before um, it, it just it was just always chaos in our office and we tend to use DM on demand for our braces patients in the beginning. And then when we get into elastic wear, there's no reason to have the patients come in and have the doctors check when we can see how their bite correction is going and we can set their goals on their, on their patient dashboard. Uh, and it allows if they need to have a power chain or no tie changed, it allows us not to have to see that patient they can come in on one of our non-doctor days where the staff is here and it gives the staff something to do on those days as well. So I have friends that use it and they even, they basically just say, hey, we don't have them come in till we know the wire's done working. We can tell when the wire's done working, then we have them come in. Um, I'm just a little more hands-on. I'm a little, a little more neurotic about that, but the longer I do this, the more comfortable I feel trusting that DM is going to drive the ship in the right direction. Oh, yeah. I can remember asking you, you know, I, I was working with you uh, personally when you you and your team first started. And maybe a year in, I had asked about if your intervals had changed. And you said, no, I'm still at about, the, and your answer was the same, about eight weeks. Uh, so we still schedule them. But it's the fact that I know everything that goes on when it happens any time in that eight week period, whether it's day one or, you know, week seven, I know yeah, when it correct. happens. Correct. And and you just don't, you don't have, uh, like I said, you're not a triage doctor. You know, what's coming in every single day. I mean, our schedule, we just had a, a new, a new person. We hired uh, Leslie for a DM coordinator. She has 25 years of experience has worked in some wonderful uh, big practices across the United States. Uh, how she ended up in Springfield, Missouri, I have no idea, but I'm glad she did. She's going to be a wonderful DM coordinator. She's just totally, no one has ever used it before in her previous offices. And she's been out for about the last five years out of ortho and just got back into it. But she loves it and she's just, she can't get enough. And so, you know, she's seeing the benefits of this. She's like, gosh, it's so nice in the afternoons. We just don't have any stress. Everything, there's no emergencies. We know exactly what's happening. We know what we're going to do on the patient that day. The staff can pull it up right before they bring the patient back and see how they, what their scan look like. And, you know, we, we just don't have any surprise anymore. Like I said, we treat proactively now rather than reactively. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the next question, and, and this is the two-part question, is uh, about how much time are, are you and Dr. Moore spending each day or each week reviewing scans yourselves? You know, everyone thinks it's going to be a big time killer for us. I get up at the crack of dawn, so I usually go through the scans before I even get to the office. And then when Dr. Moore and I get here about 20 to 30 minutes before we start patients, we go through go through all of them. She goes through if there's anything we need to talk about as far as how treatment's going, et cetera, some of the issues one patient may be having, uh, some of the comments that they may send in. Um, we get that all done in a 20 to 30 minute period, and we're looking anywhere from probably 60 to over 100 scans, depending on how many come in that day. Um, it's easy to take care of it. And then, with, you know, like I said, DM doesn't cure your problems overnight. Um, it will in time stay the course, uh, go all in and, and stay on the ship. Don't don't jump off and swim to shore. Uh, because now, like I said, we went from 120 to 150 people a day to 40 to 55, you know, sometimes even less than that. Uh, so we have big gaps in our day now that we can kind of coordinate our schedule where we'll take an hour and we'll sit down and we'll just go through uh, clin checks or, you know, the submit cases to Spark or Invisalign or whatever company you want to use. Um, and so when we, when we get there 30 minutes ahead of schedule or before patients are scheduled, we're walking out the door at five o'clock and we spend all of our time away from the office, not on a computer, not doing clin checks, not reviewing scans. Um, yes, patients do if they have a question. Uh, I, I'm like I said, hands on. I've got it set up to where they can get a hold. I, I see a message on my phone and I like to respond back to them. My kids are both grown up and, and out of our house. So it gives me something to do so I don't drive my wife crazy. 
Yep. <laughs> you're still going to do that. You're still going to. Oh yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Just not quite as much as I used more to. More controlled <laughs> sense now. <laughs> and the second part of that, and and you kind of touched on this, but it, it's I still love this question. Is you know, do you feel as if what you're getting with respect to all the extra time is is just being given back because you do invest so much of your own time reviewing scans and the notifications? Um, to answer that question, I'm really not investing a lot more time because I'm still doing it in the amount of time that I was spending at the office. I, I used to get the office about six in the morning. I'd try to figure out who was coming in, try to look at, at some things before DM and figure out if there's a problem patient coming in, if there's a patient, the treatment wasn't going great. Uh, and then we'd go in and um, see patients. I didn't have time to do anything except run from chair to chair to chair. Um, and so for me, I don't see it as adding any time at all. Um, my days are less stressful. We have time to do all that stuff. Once again, it doesn't, doesn't happen overnight, but that's what DM has has allowed us to to change our practice to become. And, you know, we're, we're basically seeing a two doctor practice. Of one doctor can easily control that in our situation. And it's nice. So if I'm out of the office, Dr. Moore doesn't have a stressful day and vice versa. Oh, yeah. I think you mentioned you could you could see, you know, kind of address 60 to 100 patients in an hour, if I heard that right, do, doing it remotely on the dashboard. But I'm guessing you couldn't see that same amount of patients in the chair in the same amount. <laughs> no, we have, we have 10 chairs in our office <laughs> I mean, in Springfield. And, you know, we used to schedule people every 15 minutes. So we were seeing 40 to people an hour, like after school appointments, you know, early in the day when you're doing bandings and putting uh, things on, that was, that was good. Uh, you had to spend, you know, block off more time, but yeah, it's crazy. I mean, my, my kids always joke because if they're at our house, uh, Arizona and Springfield, they'll get up and walk into the room and I may flip it open on a Saturday morning if I'm on call and I'll go through and I may look at 80 people and I said, fantastic. I just looked at 80 of my patients today. Treatment's going great. What are we going to do the rest of the day together? Hey, <laughs> and it really works like that. Yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned a, you referenced the timeline uh, showing the initial between the initial launch in January and your team kind of really getting on board and, and supporting the effort by about April, which is a three to four month window. But was there a, specific turning point that you observed with the team that when they're like, okay, we're really on board with you now. You know, I don't want to sound too, you know, like uh, all I do is live and breathe DM, but really it's after we had our training session and you were part of that at that point in time um, that I think just the nervousness and and having to do something different, that's always an issue. That's why I kind of gave the ultimatum, like I spoke about that, hey, we're jumping on this DM boat and we're sailing. And if you don't mm -hmm. want to jump on, that's cool. I, I, I respect that. But if you don't jump on, you're going to be left at the dock. And so everyone knew, and I, ha I have assistants that are 22 years old and I have some that are, that are 60 years old. So I have a wide variety. And, you know, most of our assistance, uh, the exception of a couple younger ones have been with me almost 20 plus years or longer. Uh, so it's really scary for them. Uh, but just after our, our, they did such a great job when they did our training and because of the way that I started it, because I knew that I had to kind of start and not do everybody retroactively because that would overwhelm my staff. I like to blame them, but it really overwhelmed me as well. But some people can handle that. And that's why I said no wrong way to use it. But uh, for us, just those first two or three months, we'd get together in the morning for like five minutes because we may only have one or two people scan. Um, and it was a great way for the, the staff to log on and to see that everyone got on their computers in the clinic and, and they could see, oh my gosh, look at that. I forgot to cut this wire. Oh my gosh, look at that. That band's loose. I can't believe I didn't put the power chain around that very back molar band. Uh, Dr. Sharp told me to do this and, and I, I totally forgot to clip the wire. Um, so they learned as I learned. And so it kind of kept our team very unified and all on the same page. And so first thing they do in the morning now, they come in, they pull up uh, all the aligner companies that we use, 
and uh, their practice management and DM. It's a big no-no if you don't have those th three things pulled up. So when they go out to get people, if they know that they missed a scan last week and they're a week or two behind, they talk to them, they talk to the parents, uh, and usually the parents will even talk to them and say, gosh, sorry, we were out of town or we were at grandma's house and forgot to take the scan box. And so, um, so it was a pretty quick, the staff really jumped on board pretty quick. And I think it was because I was alongside of them instead of mm -hmm. a lot of the things I've done in the past, I come back with a great idea and say, you guys implement this and it's going to work great. I'm going to be doing my own thing. So it was a journey that we all took together, I think was the reason it was so successful. And you guys set that up and made that possible and made everyone see the, the, um, how great it was going to be if we just stay the course. Oh yeah. And I think actually what you just said, I think was the greatest key is that you, you, you all did it together. You were right there with them learning as you're going. But I think what came across as an ultimatum was really like, well, it sounds like an ultimatum, but you know, we've got to, we trust him enough that maybe he sees it for us that we don't yet see. Yeah. Uh, and I think that was a big part of it too. And I think that was, this was the first thing I've ever come back from an AAO and have been so excited about. I, I was, I was hoping that this was going to all be true at the time because it was very new. I think you guys started in 2016 or 17 in the U.S. So I was a very, very early on border. Um, so, you know, as far as that goes, I think they knew that if I was that into it, then it was going to be okay. It's going to, we're going to have our struggles. We're going to have some, some time to work through the, the hard knocks together, but we're going to do it as a team. And I wasn't going to put all the, the onus burden on them uh, or vice versa. They weren't going to all put it on me. And so we never really had any dissension of whether we should continue this or whether we shouldn't. They saw the immediate value of it uh, pretty much within the first month, six weeks, eight weeks, definitely by three months. Like I said, the fan was cleaned up and I was a happy guy. <laughs> and, and since you started monitoring patients before we even released the first version of our scan box, that officially makes you an OG. So Fantastic. So I love it. I, I tease with my staff all the time. And, and most people in some of my uh, some of my lectures, I actually show the progression of scan boxes. Uh, yeah. You know, there's been two. But originally, there were these blue lip and cheek retractors, and the patient had to hold them, hold their phone the perfect distance, look into a mirror, and move the lip and cheek retractors. And I always tease that we need to uh, we need to send a um, like a like a gift certificate to all those patients because no one really challenged me on that. They just saw how excited I was, how excited the staff was, and they just wanted to be a part of it. And I I thank God every day that they were they were so understanding and that it had to be hard for them. And then once, uh, I guess they released the scan box, we saw it in March in, in Las Vegas, 2019. So I'd been using a couple months and then that summer we got the scan boxes. So I did, I, I'm not a, a, a huge OG, but I got my three to four months in. So I get to keep, keep that title, I guess that makes me happy. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, th well, for the sake of time, I'll say uh, thank you again, Dr. Sharp, for sharing your presentation and your experience as a true OG hands-on dental monitoring user. And thank you to everyone who submitted a question or comment. I believe we got through all of them, but if, if there was a, something that came in late, I apologize if we we're not able to get to that. Uh, our next doctor-led DM Connect presentation will be Friday, September 15th with Dr. Jason Battle. On the subject of dynamic scheduling, a great topic to discuss. But between now and then, we will have a two-part DM coordinator-led series with part one scheduled for Thursday, August 31st, and part two on Thursday, September 14th. Uh, these have been designed for team member engagement, and the first will feature uh, Heather Elliott, uh, the very talented and dedicated DM coordinator for Dr. Mark Olson out in Lander, Wyoming. And Heather will be sharing best practices for managing DM patient compliance, uh, always an, an important topic to address. And again, to review past DM Connect webinars and on demand, uh, to register and, and to register for upcoming webinars, visit dentalmonitoring.com slash events. And lastly, you've all given us the gift of your time today for which we are very, very grateful. 
And until next time, have a blessed remainder of your day wherever you are in the world and everyone be well. Thank you so much. Thank you.